Can it be true? Can it really be? Will the Batman be the best Batman movie that we've ever seen? I don't know. I really don't know. Like, looky here. This is a franchise that's been going on for like eight movies, not counting crossover films. People despised the last Batman before he even showed up. And some people loved him and others still hate him. This is the hardest thing to do, you know, being instantly loved. But here comes the Batman, like the, like he thinks he's the man leading this crowded hype train. And people are legitimately saying that's going to be the best, like there's no doubt about it. Not like, oh, I'm so excited. This is full on. It's going to be the best, okay? And that's like pretty interesting. And we're all friends here, right? We can be honest with each other. Well, I can actually see why people are acting like it's the best. You saw I was going to say something different, didn't you? But, you know, re read the title. I tricked you. Yeah, huh? It only has trailers, but the Batman is super impressive so far. But what makes the Batman seem so promising? My name is Josh, and I hope that you hit the like button and subscribe and stuff if you like today's content with that notification bell thingy. Go for friends and I'll help a friend out, right? The Aesthetic! Alright, so she, he's and they's, Gotham City is about as normal as con candy with nails in it. And any psychologist that thinks Bruce Wayne is sane needs to have their license taken away as soon as possible. It's for the sake of public safety. And that Gotham City insanity that we all love so much, can you even like remember the last time we've seen it in a movie? I can't. A little bit in like the opening of Justice League, but that was, uh, it was CGI, it doesn't count. So because of that lameness, Gotham City hasn't been too accurate in the film. It was made this New Jersey City, that doesn't exist, excite people when the trailers came out. You know, since it looked like it was from a different country altogether, which is kind of weird for an American city. You don't know why? Because, because uh, they filmed in different countries. It's very smart. And that isn't even all. No siree. The Batman takes very heavy inspiration, if I'm right, from Batman Year One which is one of the best comic book stories that's ever been told in my personal book of personal opinions. And it's poised, okay? And it feels organic. These are characters that are real people, but still complex, unlike normal people. It can be pretty boring. And the story is cinematic in its storytelling, which is perfect for theatrical adaptations. I'm pretty sure most of us would agree. If I could marry a comic book story, to be honest, it would be that one. And then we'd quickly get a divorce since they'd be a super angsty and I'm moving on from this topic. Which makes sense since, according to Matt Reeves, The Batman is supposed to take place in Batman's second year as a crime fighter. Not like the first or even the third, it is the second, not negative one, the second one. And The Batman, by the way, matches year one gorgeously. It uses similar color schemes to the comic, while the movie also keeps using a visual flair that's a lot like a comic book, with those silhouettes and those dynamic camera shots that it looks like it's out of a comic book. And plus, something else that's very cool, both Frank Miller, the writer of year one, and Matt Reeves, who is the director of The Batman, just in case you didn't know, wish to have their movies look right out of Taxi Driver, the both of them. Which is like a magnificent coincidence to show that they have the safe waves like working. That's the kind of stuff that you want to see. I mean, the Batman is obviously more modern than Taxi Driver. Freaking look at it. Can't recall Travis Bickle doing this crap right here. I thought it wouldn't be fantastic, but let's be honest. Yeah. It's mystery and you are. Hey, the Dark Knight Detective. He's called the world's greatest detective. Did you know that, Warner Brothers? Did you know that? Like, I don't think it's odd to, like, expect a detective story eventually in one of these live-action movies, but it's never happened yet. Key word, yet. Because while Michael Keaton certainly didn't, Val Kilmer, I, I guess he kind of did because of the riddles, but I didn't see him on any crime scene looking for clues. George Clooney? He existed. Christian Bale? He had a passing scene, though, and he really liked interrogating. But like with Ben Affleck, who had a sort of pseudo-espionage-style spy scene of Batman v Superman. Neither movies were mysteries at heart, they were more action thrillers. So Batman has not had one single live-action cinematic mystery story. And I hear what some of you are saying, and I'm right there with you, don't worry. Rask had the Phantasm did have a mystery to it. But that's animation, and no one watched it. Seriously, look at it, it was a bomb. Which is a shame because it's one of the best Batman movies. The Batman, however, since that's what we're talking about, 
Oh, 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 that's the Batman. They're changing that. It's into his bones that it is a mystery, thriller, action, comic book, superhero thingy. It's shocking that it's taken this long, but can we just be glad that it's here? I'd like to take a moment and just think about that. Okay, the moment's over. And every time I watch those trailers, good gosh, every time it reeks a noir, as in the Batman. I feel like that's obvious, but I don't know. I love it a lot anyways. It's just like the comics, which is what you want with an adaptation I feel like most of the time. I feel like if you're loyal to something more often than not, I don't like anything, it could be anything, it could be an anime, manga, cartoon, whatever. You want to see that experience that you get with the source material out there, live action. If you even want in live action, a lot of people don't want that, but I'm just saying if. I kind of got rambly there, but basically the Batman is finally getting a mystery out there, just like the comics that it originates from. And that is fantastic. The Casting! Hey, oh so, wait a minute, before that seems like a heck of a lot too much to say before it even comes out. This was written, recorded, and hopefully released before the movie ever came out, so this is only based on the trailers and like, a single release scene. I'm not saying I've seen to the dang future, so that'd be pretty sweet. Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Patton Robertson. Batman. The man just looks like Batman, okay? Here's a picture of Bruce from the aforementioned Batman Year One, and here's a picture of Robert Pattinson. Look at it. Study it. The features are so close, it's obvious why they casted him. When you have a super talented actor, such as Mr. Pattinson, and his extensive performance heavy roles, and he looks like the mirror image of the exact fictional character you're adapting for theaters, you hire the man. Alright? There isn't a question about it. You simply do it. But why did they have to grow his hair out? I mean, I know why. To give him a Kurt Cobain vibe and to show he's in an extra dark spot because he had his pastime of scaring the bejesus out of goons and master criminals alike turn into an addiction. He can't break out of it. There's no playboy act in this movie, but that isn't on Robert, and we don't know how the movie plays out regardless, so I'm not that upset of it. When he gets so much right, it's kind of hard to be mad at an inaccuracy when it's just trying to be unique. He's just so close, though. He looks so close to the comic, and I want him to look closer. It's so close, yet so far. It's like true cinema. Doesn't mean it's not good anyways, so. But personally, having another Bruce Wayne go darker than they ever gone before, specifically with the idea that it's like, oh, their lifestyle, their lifestyle is ravaging your mental state. And it's happening right after Ben Affleck's unique thing was having his lifestyle turn him extra nuts. It's a bit repetitive. Although this Batman doesn't kill, just so you know, no worries there. I winked, I don't know why you can't see that. But don't worry, Batfleck, I still love you. He's my favorite at the moment. Even in the costume, look at him. Robert Pattinson looks astonishing. With his jawline doing all the work it needs. The costume, by the way, I love it. It's like the MCU before it, where they take the suit as it is, but just make it more practical. Like it's a real suit, but it still looks like it. It's got the belt, but it just looks like a real suit. Except for this Captain America costume. I like it, I actually do, but I'm not gonna lie, it looks kinda weird. And much like Indiana Jones, playing Batman isn't as easy as being the world's sexiest man. You have to perform the role, which is difficult because the role comes from a piece of paper, and it's already a thing. You have to look at it and do it right. And it's not like Sherlock Holmes where you have to imagine it all in your head anyway. Comic books have panels where you go moment to moment so you can get the illusion of movement. And Robert Pattinson, Robert Pattinson replicates that with Batman excellently. There's a deliberate, menacing, precise, and sometimes slow pace to his movements. In fights, he's just as precise. With a pace so quick, goons he takes out has no idea what's going on. At crime scenes, he is concentrated and as serious like a nun teaching about the loud above. Also, he's absolutely fucking terrifying. He's perfect. For Catwoman and Commissioner Gordon, it's the same thing. As long as you palette swap them. Commissioner Gordon's got the coat, he's got the glasses, he's got that stash, the gruff attitude. He got it. Baby, I don't know what to say for Catwoman that wouldn't make me uncomfortable though. Fierce, that's accurate. Flirty, that is so uncomfortable. Seductive. It's true, but it's a bit uncomfortable. 
says the man that just called Robert Pattinson the sexiest man in the world for some reason. So Riddler? Not so much, but they want to do something different and good for them, I think. It's not what I would have done. It's not my Riddler. I'm a fan of the comic book one itself, but it's not my movie now, is it? They can do what they want. And after having a guy like Frank Gorsh play played a role about as spot on as you can anyway, I think it makes sense to experiment with the role a bit to fit in the world that they're making for their own movie. It's just kind of the natural thing to do, isn't it? It's not like we're missing out on a live action adaptation that's accurate. It gets it right where it's important to get it right. That's what is important about these adaptations. Seeing a movie with such potential, it's like always, it's always a great thing to see. After so many Batman movies, not always having the most accurate depiction of whatever it is, whether Gotham, the villains, not getting the basics of the character right, or like an important part of the character right, seeing a movie get most of it right adds to the thrill of the anticipation that this movie has. That's what keeps it exciting for fans of the source material. And excitement creates more excitement from bystanders. With Batman being such a prominent pop culture figure, his fan base is already prominent. So that hype, it spreads like a virus. But a good, cool guy virus, not that scummy other virus slash viruses. Isn't that what everyone wants? No? Okay, damn, my bad. Tell me. I want you to tell me. Have you contacted this cool guy virus? Because I want to know why you're excited for this movie, if you are. Leave a comment about your feelings on the movie before it releases. If you want to anyway, I mean, no pressure. Also, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and gently tap that notification bell. It keeps getting smashed and smashed and slapped. It's just, it deserves better, okay? And I really hope you enjoyed today's video and that you enjoy the rest of your day.